क्लास ट्वेल्थ केमिस्ट्री कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट क्रिस्टल फील्ड स्प्लिटिंग इन टेट्राहेड्रल कोऑर्डिनेशन एंटिटीज कलर इन कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स एंड लिमिटेशंस ऑफ क्रिस्टल फील्ड थ्योरी फर्स्ट कम टू क्रिस्टल फील्ड स्प्लिटिंग इन टेट्राहेड्रल कोऑर्डिनेशन एंटिटीज इन टेट्राहेड्रल कोऑर्डिनेशन एंटिटी फॉर्मेशन द डी ऑर्बिटल स्प्लिटिंग इज इनवर्टेड इनवर्टेड एंड इट्स स्मॉलर एज कंपेयर टू द ओक्टाहेड्रल फील्ड स्प्लिटिंग सी दिस डायग्राम इन दिस डायग्राम यू कैन सी दैट लिगेंड्स आर अप्रोचिंग इन बिटवीन द एक्सेस दीज आर एक्स वाई एंड जेड एक्सेस एंड दिस इज ए टेट्राहेड्रा एंड दीज आर द लिगेंड्स अप्रोचिंग इन बिटवीन द एक्सेस टू फॉर्म टेट्राहेड्रल ज्योमेट्री and we already discussed the shape of d orbitals in d orbitals dxy dyz and dxz the lobes are oriented in between the axes that's why these orbitals feel more repulsion from the negative charge of ligands while in case of dx square dash y square and dz square lobes are oriented along the axes that's why these orbitals feel less repulsion that's why their energy is decreased and this dx square y square dz square these orbitals will make a one set that is known as e with lower energy and dxy dyz and dxz the set of these orbitals is designated as t2 and these orbitals have higher energy and the difference between this e and t2 level this is known as crystal field splitting energy and this splitting is taking place in the tetrahedral coordination entity that's why this is represented as delta t okay and the energy of e set is decreased by 3 by 5 of delta t and energy of orbitals of t2 set is increased by 2 by 5 of delta t is it clear for the same metal the same ligands and metal ligand distances it can be shown that delta t is equal to 4 by 9 of delta o from this relationship you can clearly see that delta t is lower than delta o because of smaller delta t high spin complexes are observed in almost all tetrahedral complexes and low spin complexes are rarely observed in tetrahedral geometry two d orbitals that is dx square dash y square and dz square have lower energy and form e set three d orbitals dxy dyz and dxz have higher energy and form t2 set the g subscript is used for octahedral and square planar complexes which have center of symmetry since tetrahedral complexes lack symmetry g subscript is not used with energy levels now come to the color in coordination compounds the color of the complex is complementary to that which is absorbed the complementary color is the color generated from the wavelength left over if green light is absorbed by the complex it appears red from this table you can see that uh, this is the complex cocl ns352 plus it absorbed the radiation of 535 nanometer radiation of the wavelength of 535 nanometer which is of yellow color but the color of coordination entity appears violet okay you can again these are the color absorbed by the complex and these are the colors which appear again you can see this last example tih2063 plus it absorbed the wavelength of 498 nanometer and which is corresponding to the blue green but the color of complex which appear to us that is violet the color of coordination compound is due to dd transition of electron for example again take the 
TiH2O6 3+. This is octahedral complex, which is violet in color. And in this complex, titanium is present in 3 plus oxidation state. That is Ti3+. And in Ti3+, electronic configuration is 3D1. If we write this electronic configuration in terms of crystal field theory, then this will come T2G1 EG0. Okay. If light corresponding to the energy of blue-green region is absorbed by the complex, it would excite the electron from T2G level to the EG level. Now again, you can see that this is the electronic configuration before the excitement, and this is the electronic configuration after the assignment after the excitement of the electron consequently the complex appears violet in color again you can see from this diagram this is ground state electronic configuration electron present in t2g level when it absorbs the radiation this electron is excited to the higher energy level that is eg level okay in the absence of ligand, crystal field splitting does not occur and hence the substance is colorless. For example, removal of water from TiH2O6Cl3 on heating renders it colorless. On if we heat it, then these water molecules will remove which are acting as a ligand. Then this compound becomes colorless. Similarly, anhydrous copper sulfate is white but CuSO4 dot 5H2O is blue in color. You are familiar with this copper sulfate pentahydrate, which is blue in color. If you heat it, again, these water molecules will remove and this will convert into anhydrous copper sulfate, which is white in color. Again, nature of ligand will also decide the color of a complex. That's how you can say influence of the ligand on the color of a complex. If we take aqua solution of this compound, nih 2 plus which is green in color okay add this is ethylene diamine en then two molecules of water is replaced by one molecule of en and the complex becomes pale blue color okay again if we add the excess of en then two more water molecules are removed by the one more molecule of en and this complex is formed which is either blue or purple color then again, if we add the excess of ethylene diamine, then all the water molecules are replaced by the EN and we will get this complex and which is violet in color. Same thing you can also see in this diagram. This is green having this formula. This is pale blue. This is with this formula. This is blue or purple with this formula and this is violet with this formula okay color of some gemstones i think you are familiar with this term gemstones nagini okay like ruby in hindi this is called manik which is red in color actually this is a basically this is aluminium oxide but this aluminium oxide contains the some impurity of chromium ions, which is in 0.5 to 1% Cr3 plus ion, which have D3 configuration. And this color is due to this ion. In the same day, emerald, in Hindi, this is known as panna. This is green in color. In this case, Cr3 plus ions occupy octahedral sites in the mineral beryl, Be3, Al2, Si6, O18. Emerald is basically this mineral. But in this mineral, some of the octahedral occupies Cr3 plus ions. And this color is due to this Cr3 plus. You can see this is ruby stone and this is ruby gemstones. This is emerald. Actually, this is the rose stone. And after polishing, we will get this. This is again a uh, rose stone of emerald. And after polishing, we will get this shining emerald gemstones. Limitations of crystal field theory. It assumes that ligands are point charges, okay, which follows that an ionic ligand should exert the greatest splitting effect. The anionic ligands are actually found at the low end of the spectrochemical series. Now, just try to understand. According to this theory, there is purely electrostatic force of attraction between the ligand and metal atom or ion. 
it means anionic ligand should exert more splitting effect but if we see the spectrochemical series then these anionic ligands appear at the low end of the series and at the upper end of the series like nh3 en co which are neutral they appear at the upper ligands it cannot be explained by this theory further it does not take into account the covalent character of bonding between the ligand and the central atom these weaknesses of crystal field theory are explained by ligand field theory and molecular orbital theory which you will discuss in the higher class okay student thank you